Hi everyone, thank you for joining me to learn a little bit more about the capstone experience. Whether you have already decided to do a capstone project or if you're interested in doing a capstone project this year or next year, I think today you will find that you're going to learn a little bit about the project and an understanding of what the experience is. My name is Nicole McDonald. I am a school counselor in the Guilford High School office, but I am also the coordinator of the capstone program. So I'm happy to have all of you here today to learn a little bit more about capstone. So why do a capstone project? So a capstone project can take many different shapes and forms. It can look like an internship experience. It can help with resume building. It can help you explore an area that you're interested in that you just want to learn a little bit more about. It could possibly be a subject area that you've already taken at school and you just want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, so let's say that you are taking a biology course and you want to delve deeper into something specific in a unit that you learned in biology, but that unit ended. So your capstone experience could be along those lines, or it can just be a career interest area or even a hobby. It's a real chance to get a outside real world experience. So a lot of times it can be hands on. It can be something where you're working out in the field. It can be something where you're working with professionals in the field. Um, it can really be a great chance to spread your wings beyond just the classroom. A lot of students find it to be sort of an outside of the box experience, so finding it to be um, really delving into something more unique and tailored to your interests and your needs. I can tell you firsthand that it certainly helps with the college application experience. I've had students that I've worked with that have really increase their chances of admission because of the capstone project because it really is college bound and college ready um, it shows a sense of independence a sense of taking ownership for yourself of your education so it really does help with that it's also a way to build curriculum so a nice chance to allow you to sort of delve into what curriculum you want to follow as part of the capstone experience, and you're gonna find this later in the presentation, you have the ability to pick sources, books, articles, YouTube, TED Talks, podcasts, things that you wanna to listen to to learn more about. Uh, while we value our teachers' ability to provide us with those resources, this gives you the autonomy to choose the things that you wanna cover and what you feel are best, okay? Other things to think about. Um, it's a chance to work with an expert in the field. So while you're completing the capstone experience, you have the chance to work with what's called a mentor. That's a person typically in the community. It could be Guilford community. It could be New Haven County community. Some people work with individuals out of state, um, even internationally. Obviously we have this ability now via Zoom and via Google Meet that we can connect with individuals that are experts in this field. Um, in whatever field that you have chosen. Another nice thing about it is you can choose your own hours. So if you're more of a morning person and you like to get stuff done first thing in the morning, you can work on your capstone in the morning, let's say. Or if you're more of an evening person, a night owl, and you feel like you do better in the evening, you can work on it then. Um, you'll find out later in the presentation that to do a half credit capstone project, so for those of you who are considering semester two of capstone, um, for this school year, you can um, gain your hours during the school year um, for semester two, and that would be 60 hours of work to get that half credit. If you're considering doing a full year project, let's say next school year, that would be 120 hours of work. Whenever you do those hours, um, that is going to be tailored to the credit that you will earn. So here are some previous capstone experiences to give you some ideas. And I also want to encourage you to check out our YouTube channel, um, Guilford's YouTube channel. There's a slew of capstone presentations that have been recorded from last year. Um, and you can see all the different topics and ideas. You'll see that they stem from all different areas of interest, whether it's science, whether it's education, whether it's um, more scientific, whether it's something more holistic, it could be environmental, it really could be anything. But here's are some ideas of some previous capstone projects. These are only naming a few. Um, in the time that I have overseen the capstone project over the last, I believe, eight years, um, I probably had about 50 um, different topics each year. So as you can see, these are only naming 
about 10 um, options. So there's all different topics out there. Um, but I just want to highlight a few. So I had a student who um, figured out what the best economical cost would be um, to plan a trip to Disney World. And they did all different scenarios of packages and prices and hotels versus, versus driving and to figure out the best and most um, financially um, best way to do a trip to Disney World. Um, I had another student who took time to rebuild his own truck and Jeep. I've had a couple students do stuff like that. Um, I had some students learn about the future of the OB OBGYN career, molecular biology. I had a student that learned about how rescue um, dogs can be helpful in cardiac arrest alerts. Um, I had a student work on a video production experience where they worked at an internship at a video production agency. I had a student develop their own website and they were featured in People Magazine. I had another student who um, was pushing for the Tobacco 21 uh, law to be passed and they worked at the state capitol experience and in that experience the law was passed, um, which was really ironic because she was working at it on the time that ended up being passed. And then I had another student um, who was working on exploring the world of fashion merchandising. Um, and they got to work with some pretty cool professionals in the field with some po uh, positive um, people that, um, that have been pretty big in, um, in the news and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, now I'm gonna have some students speak about their perspectives doing a capstone project. Um, and so they're gonna tell you a little bit about their experience doing capstone and how it was helpful to them um, how it was beneficial and just some insights and ideas. So I will let those students speak um, and I encourage you to reach out to them if you have any questions and again looking at the YouTube channel as well. Hi, my name is Claire. I did a year-long career searching themed capstone last year. Um, I was inspired to do this because of my panic going into the real world without knowing what I wanted to do with my life and I thought I could change that. Um, actually this capstone was pretty interesting because at the end of the day I realized that I couldn't narrow my interests as much as I initially thought, which was a very useful lesson for me. Um, I thought I was definitely going to go into a STEM field and after talking to authors and philanthropists I decided that really I can't narrow myself to the STEM field entirely. So that was a very important lesson for me. Um, I would say that it was tricky with COVID. Fortunately, a lot of my idea was to interview people already by phone or by Zoom. So it wasn't that impacted for me. I know a lot of topics were impacted a lot worse than mine were. Um, so as long as you make sure to contact your mentor frequently, that can really be helpful. So my advice would be to try to pace yourself with the hours. It's really tricky if you procrastinate. And I would also recommend that you meet with your mentor and advisor more than you think you have to because often they will have great advice for you. Um, and they'll be able to take kind of an outside look at your topic and give you some advice from their experiences, which is very important. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy your capstone and thanks for watching. And exploring our knowledge and interest in the topic. We definitely had a big research component to our project, researching history, the grammar, sign language and education, um, like child development, the science behind it and how it impacts, like learning a language can impact brain development in children. So really you can take your project in any different direction that interests you. And if you start off in one direction, you can end up changing it slightly and kind of veering off in a different direction. That's totally fine. Your projects, whatever you make of it, whatever you put in, you're going to get out. And another th thing that we did that I found was very valuable in my project was we conducted interviews. Um, with experts in the field, anyone we can get in, in contact with. We had planned on going to the Hartford School for the Deaf to observe a class. However, that was canceled because of COVID. So we ended up um, watching a webinar and doing a Zoom interview with a teacher for the deaf. 
so yes, during especially this year with all the guidelines and restrictions from COVID, I would suggest in doing interviews, Zoom interviews. I think that was very helpful for me and it's a good recommendation for anyone going into a capstone project this year. Another recommendation I would have is um, to be successful is to definitely stay on top of your hours as much as you can, especially if you're doing a year-long capstone. 120 hours is a lot, and it's if you're not on top of it, it's easy to stay behind or to get behind, and that's just going to catch up with you and hurt you later in the year, and it's more enjoyable if you're on top of your hours and you choose a topic that you enjoy, and it's just very it's beneficial to you in the end and overall greater experience. And lastly, for a piece of advice I would give for anyone looking into doing a project is to get creative with it and truly tailor it to your interests. Um, like I said, this project is whatever you put into it. It's not a structured class. It's based off of your interests and can help you explore a career, a, a career option or something you might be interested in studying or pursuing after high school, which it did for me. So I'd say definitely choose something you're interested in and whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. Hi, my name is Haley and last year I did a capstone project on environmental testing. I really enjoyed capstone because it allowed me to explore my field of interest. But if you don't know what that is yet, it's a great way to find out what you want to do and what you're interested in. And one thing I recommend for people going into capstone is to make sure you meet all the deadlines because it's very easy to fall behind if you don't keep up with your work and make sure you know what direction you're going. My favorite thing about Capstone is having the flexibility and independence to do what you want and learn what you want to do. And it's really nice to have a mentor and an advisor who help you in doing that. So when the pandemic hit, I sort of had to change my plan and what I wanted to do for my capstone. So instead of going out and doing research with someone else, I did my independent research and I made sort of my own lab out in the field, which was really nice. And I learned a lot about what I want to do as a career. So I hope that you found that helpful. Um, again, please feel free to reach out to those students. They are more than open to speaking with you. If you need to connect with them, I'm happy to do that. Um, and again, the YouTube channel, Guilford High School, has all of the presentations from last year, which I think you'll find helpful. Let's talk a little bit about finding a mentor. So your mentor is your expert in the field. Um, so really the projects, as you know, are very self-developed and student interest driven. Um, but it's important that you work with somebody who has some experience in your topic area of interest. So finding a mentor in your area of interest is really crucial and important. Um, so what I always suggest doing is starting to reach out to some community members that you may know um, that might be able to help link you up with somebody. Our Guilford Mentoring Office, um, GHS Mentoring Office, is a great resource as well. I can connect you with them. Ms. Ott um, is very helpful in linking you up with some professionals in the field, and I, of course, can help you with that too. Um, we do encourage that meetings with mentors be conducted virtually just to maintain the health and safety of all with the current COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and obviously we have many avenues and ways that you can connect on a virtual level, um, whether it's Google Meet or Zoom. Um, so we would encourage you to do that. And how does this work? So like I said, Zoom meetings, um, other ways that you can conduct research in your topic. I always suggest looking and searching for different webinars in your topic area. You can also be searching for podcasts, for TED Talks. Um, YouTube videos, all those things are really great in terms of helping in um, connecting you and allowing you to get more and more information in your area of interest. Um, and your mentor can definitely help you with that too in finding some virtual opportunities. Um, they've been super, super helpful um, with helping with that. So um, I would definitely encourage you to ask your mentor um, for some assistance as well. And remember that your advisor um, who is a faculty member at Guilford High School. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so your advisor is another person that can assist you as well. 
So you're gonna ask for someone of the GHS faculty member to advise your project. Now they don't need to be tied to the topic area, they just need to be somebody that you're comfortable working with um, that can kind of oversee the projects and the fundamentals of the project. And they really, really help when the presentation comes around. So um, they can definitely be a good resource as well. So who helps you speaking with this? So we talked about the mentor, they're the expert in the field. You have your advisor, that's your faculty um, advisor and person that kind of oversees your topic. You're gonna to wanna to reach out to them yourself and ask um, for them to be your advisor. There's some forms that you will have them sign as well as the mentor. And then myself as the capstone coordinator, um, I will be assisting you as well. So here's kind of the nuts and bolts of what is required. So you have 60 hours of work that you have to complete for a half credit. So if you're doing the semester two project, you need to complete 60 hours of work that's documented on a timeline. If you're considering doing next year um, for a full credit, that's 120 hours of work. Um, project proposal is another piece to it too. Um, so you, that is the first thing that you're going to do is submit your proposal. It's a questionnaire that you'll find on Google Classroom. I'm going to explain how to get to the Google Classroom in a little bit, but that's kind of what your game plan is, what you plan to accomplish. It's just a series of questions that you'll complete and that acts as your proposal. Once that's approved, that kind of gets you started. Um, research documentation, so you're going to have five sources that you need to have documented to support your project. Like I said before, those could be articles, those could be um, podcasts, those could be YouTube videos, they could be books, um, whatever it is that helps support your project. Um, you just wanna make sure it's a professional resource. And then journal entries. You're gonna have a journal entry once a month that you need to complete. So if you're doing a semester project, it's gonna be five journal entries. If you're doing a full year, it'll be 10. At the end of the semester, you'll have a two-page reflection paper, a 20-minute presentation that you'll give to the Guilford community. Um, we are already planning our semester one presentations. They're gonna be occurring next week, January 25th. Um, I believe that they're taking place Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, um, and they're gonna be via Zoom. So I'll be sending out communication if you wanna tap into any of those presentations and listen, that's another way to learn a little bit more. Um, but this will really show you what you would end up doing if you completed a capstone project and how you'd be presenting to the community via Zoom. And then there's evaluations that need to be completed by your mentor or your advisor, um, and you have to do a self-evaluation as well. So how do you get started? So if you're interested in getting started on doing a capstone project for this coming second semester of the 2020-21 school year, you're gonna want to first step right from the beginning, enroll in the Google Classroom. On the screen, you're gonna see the semester two Google Classroom code, so jot that down. Um, once you do enroll in the classroom, that's gonna tell me that you would like to complete a capstone project this semester, and I will enroll you via PowerSchool. So make sure before you enroll um, in the classroom that you do make the decision of whether you'd like to do it or not. I, of course, would encourage you to complete it. I think it's a great experience. Um, and obviously if you have questions and you wanna get into more details before making a decision, you can of course uh, reach out to me. I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one and help you uh, make that decision, okay? So that is the semester two um, classroom code. After that, next steps. So you wanna start working on your proposal and obviously you wanna determine your capstone topic first. So how do we figure out what our topic is? So our topic really should be driven by our passions, our interests, the things that are meaningful to us. That can be a subject area, that can be a hobby, that can be a feeling that you have, it could be something that you're passionate about, bringing awareness to, whatever it is, um, you want it to be driven by your passions, okay? I think when you look at the proposal template, you'll see that that's gonna kind of help guide you in what you're gonna be discussing and talking about and what you plan to do. Um, proposals are due on February 4th via Google Classroom. Um, so you wanna make sure you get your proposal in by then. And then um, you wanna find a mentor and advisor to support your topic, okay? So that's gonna be an important part as well. I would probably simultaneously be looking for a mentor and advisor while you're working on your proposal because they may even be able to assist you with it, okay? 
Um, so your mentor, again, is your expert in your field. Your advisor is a faculty member who's volunteering to help with your project. Um, and then you also obviously want to communicate with your parents and make sure that they are on board with this. They're going to sign off on some forms, um, a parent agreement form, and a media release form so that we can allow for um, the ability to publicize your topic um, when it goes out to the community. And then you can also have your topic um, in your presentation be broadcasted on our YouTube channel if you're comfortable, of course. And then following the proposal being due, our first mandatory meeting is February 11th. Um, it's going to be on a Thursday via Zoom at three o'clock um, and all forms are due at that time. So you need to get your mentor and your advisor squared away and have them sign off on those forms, all available on Classroom. Um, and your parent needs to sign those two forms, the parent agreement and the media release, all by the, the 11th of February. This is my contact information, and if you want to discuss this with me further, I'm happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I'm happy to email questions back and forth, Google Chat. Um, so there is my contact information, Mrs. McDonald again, McDonald and at guildfordschools.org, and you can contact me that way. Um, and we can help figure out whether this is a good experience for you, whether you want to do it this semester or next year. Um, I personally feel that a capstone experience is one that is beneficial for every student, no matter what your interests are. Um, timing is obviously key. You want to make sure it's the right timing for you, depending on what else you have going on in your school life and work life and home life and personal life. Um, but I do believe that prior to graduating from Guilford High School, a capstone experience can be very, very rewarding and really help pave the way to um, your next steps in your post-secondary career or your work career, whatever it is that you plan to do next. So I thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out and um, I hope to hear or see all of you soon. Thank you. Have a great day.